In this video, I want to further discuss the intersection of faith and public speaking, uh, specifically by talking about the four talks of truthful speaking as outlined in Quentin Schultz's excellent textbook, An Essential Guide to Public Speaking, Serving Your Audience with Faith, Skill, and Virtue, and specifically that portion of that text. So uh, in that text, Schultz outlines these four, what he calls the four talks of truthful speaking. And those talks are this, and we're going to dissect each of these a little bit individually, but they are, just as an overview here, uh, the God, God talk, doubt talk, honest talk, and straight talk. Those are the four talks of truthful speaking that Schultz outlines in his uh, textbook here. So uh, let's take each of these one at a time. Let's start with God talk. And by this we mean um, these large God-based issues that are, that, are, that are what Schultz refers to as our control beliefs and talks about as our control beliefs. Uh, these are these are things that are that are huge in scope and, and hugely important. These are the things that are such as God's revealed or spoken truth to us, and so they're they're matters of of the, the fundamental essence of our faith, uh, who God is, uh, who we are to Him, uh, who we are in the world because of Him, and and these just really foundational fundamental elements. Of, of our spiritual talk. Now, it's important. These are important ideas, and and sometimes the, it's what we're there to talk about, and that's great. Um, but other times it's not. And we need to bear in mind to speakers that even as people of faith, God talk is not necessarily required for all speeches. It's not all the time that we're talking explicitly about faith-based things. Even though our faith informs how we're going to talk about that and what we're going to talk about, um, it's not always inherently important for us to. To reveal our, our God message through our speech, so it's not required for all speeches, uh, and and it does make uh, make us uh, involve making us assumptions uh, regarding the audience. What do we know about the audience? Is this a faith-based audience? Are they a Christian audience? Are they going to understand our terminology? Are they going to? Is this, how is this going to relate to them? And how is this going to impact our, our talk to this audience? We need to make some assumptions about that audience what they do know, what they don't know, what they may believe, what they may not believe, and, and determine whether or not this really even uh, needs to be a part of this particular speech. Um, and if it if it does or does not, either way, we need to use language carefully. So we need to consider the audience may not have the same vocabulary we do in terms of our, our faith and our beliefs and things like that. So even if we are talking about um, something God-related, they may not have the same understanding of the nature of sin as we do, for example. Just that word sin may not mean the same thing to that audience as it does to us. They may have a, a different interpretation of that. So either we're going to need to explain our version of sin, or if it's not explicitly a faith-based talk, we may need to use different terminology and maybe not refer to sin because that's not something the audience can relate to. So we really need to carefully consider our language um, when we're thinking about uh, about God talk and, and how we're framing these issues and, and considering uh, the different topics that we may talk about uh, as people of faith, uh, whether or not they are explicitly faith-based or not topics. I also need to consider doubt talk. And by this, we're not talking about doubting yourself or doubting your, your worth as a person or as a speaker or anything like that. What we're talking about here is the fact that, that we are not omnipotent. We don't know everything. And a lot of times we as speakers want to sound so confident that we that we throw these statements out there and it makes it sound like we feel like we have all the answers and know everything uh, and and we don't we simply don't we are not omnipotent so we need to use qualifiers appropriately we may need to qualify things such as in my opinion or in my belief is that this would be best and use those types of qualifiers uh, when we're not talking about an absolute truth or an absolute certainty right so it's important that we that we be able to take a stand, but we also need to recognize that we are fallible as people. We are not um, perfect, and we are not omnipotent, and so we need to use qualifiers as necessary to um, to separate our opinion from from fact and separate, uh, you know, uh, what may be our truth from other people's truths, and 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 just to bear that in mind from the audience's perspective as well. As Christians, we also have an obligation to engage in honest talk. I mean, we, we are called as people of faith to, to be honest and to, to be truthful with, with people as we deal with them and as we speak to them. And certainly that is absolutely true as speakers as well. Uh, the idea, the old idea that honesty is the best policy, certainly as, as a speaker in general, regardless of your faith, that's, that's certainly true. But absolutely as people of faith, and we also have that added obligation, not just as ethical speakers, but as, as Christians and as people of, of the Christian faith to be honest and, and to be straightforward with an audience. So. And this has considerations in a variety of areas, such as plagiarism. Obviously, plagiarism is is not honest talk. It's it's 
stealing from someone else and stealing their words and stealing their work. So we need to avoid plagiarism at all costs. We also need to avoid just out and out fabrication. If we can't find enough evidence to support idea, we can't just make things up. We can't just make up statistics and even even just fudging statistics or using statistics in a way that they were not intended to be used is fabrication as well. So we need to be aware of that and avoid fabrication of any kind, whether it's, you know, manipulating a statistic to meet our needs or just out and out making so something up that's not uh, not appropriate at all. So then the question is, is there ever a justifiable deception? And, you know, there's some gray area here in terms of, uh, you know, if you're giving eulogy for somebody and they may or may not be the greatest person ever in the world, you're not just going to trash talk this person uh, during their eulogy. So you may find a way to um, to, to say nice things about them, even if they weren't such a nice person. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, that's what we mean by gray area, but not certainly not just uh, making up things about somebody or, or making up statistics and things like that. So there's a world of difference in those types of things. And, and, and saying something kind to somebody so that we're not hurtful, and yet there's a big difference between that and just flat out lying to them and not telling them the truth. So, um, so those are some considerations that we need to keep in mind. And avoiding deception is is not just, it's, it's a matter of ethos as a speaker in general, as we've talked about, honesty is the best policy for any speaker. It's a matter of credibility and, and developing you know, that rapport with the audience and, and connecting with them in terms of character and competence. It's a matter of ethos, but it's also for us a matter of faith. It's a matter of of doing the right thing in God's eyes and being honest when we when we approach an audience and not trying to manipulate them. Finally, as people of faith and as Christians, we have an obligation uh, to, to for straight talk. Really, um, what we're saying here is we want to avoid saying a lot without saying anything at all. We don't want to be one of those speakers who just talks around a subject, maybe because it's uncomfortable or maybe because it's you know just not something we know about. We we don't want to talk around a subject. We owe it to our audience as people fit to to be straight with them and and not to kind of beat around the bush and not to obscure what we're trying to say so we need to use language that's understandable and direct uh, and we need to, to do the same with our nonverbal messages we need to not confuse the issue so we need to be both uh, we need to be understandable and direct in both our verbal and our nonverbal messages so we have an obligation to do that through straight talk and as, as the bible points out we need to let our yes mean yes and our no mean no and use our words and our nonverbal communication in a way that that indicates that that, that we are being honest and straightforward with an audience and and uh, and not giving them any reason to to doubt or question what it is we're saying or trying to obfuscate anything and, and confuse the audience in any way we need to engage in, in straight talk if you have questions about this or any other public speaking related topic feel free to email me i'm always happy to to respond to emails and communicate in that way and, and continue the conversation there so uh, in the meantime, happy communicating.